It's been tough to get a hold of a Huawei phone in the U.S. for, well, basically forever. But this is the first time that I've ever been sad about that, because this is something special. I'm Mr. Mobile, and this is the Huawei P20 Pro Review, brought to you by App Academy. I want to start with a question my fellow Americans are probably asking. When you can get a great smartphone at your neighborhood carrier store, why would you consider paying a premium for one that's not officially supported? Well, there are three reasons, actually, and they're grouped together right up here. A 20 megapixel monochrome, an 8 megapixel telephoto, and a monster 40 megapixel primary make for a smartphone camera system the power of which hasn't been seen in five years. It's so central to the P20 Pro's story that Huawei put all its branding sideways, an undeniable cue that you're meant to hold this phone like a camera. If only there were a shutter button on top. Oh well. All the buzz about the camera has a lot of folks comparing the P20 Pro to the Google Pixel 2, which makes sense. For me, the Pixel 2 has the best camera you can find on a phone. But these two are designed for very different types of photographers. Google's phone just wants to give you the best shot without you having to think much about it, while all the options and features on the Huawei phone, not to mention the Leica branding, seem to want you to rise to its camera's potential. I know, that sounds tacky, but this phone really does make me want to be a better photographer. In fact, I haven't felt this inspired by a phone camera since the Lumia 1020 of 2013. And um, that's no coincidence either. The current director of imaging at Huawei is one of the guys who invented that camera back at Nokia. Okay, history lesson's over. What can all this hardware do for you? Well, for starters, you can take a 40 megapixel photo. But you probably don't want to, because you'll fill up the onboard storage in no time, and there's no micro SD card when you run out of space. So the default setting is 10 megapixels. And while that might sound like a waste of the huge sensor, it's not. See, this phone uses a technique called pixel binning to combine four of the camera's pixels into one. Now, this isn't new, and it's not unique to Huawei. A lot of phones have done it, but not many of them have a 40 megapixel sensor to spread out on. On the P20 Pro, this approach makes for an equivalent pixel size about 40% larger than on most modern phones. And when you're talking pixel size, bigger is better. More light gets collected, and there's less digital noise or grain in the resulting photos. Leaving the resolution at 10 megapixels also means you can use one of the two halo features here, hybrid zoom. Here's where that telephoto lens comes in. When you punch in on a subject, it gives you 3x optical magnification. And the phone isn't just relying on that camera, it also peppers in image data from the main sensor to enhance sharpness. In fact, most of the time, at least two of these cameras are working together. That monochrome sensor, it's not just for black and white photos, it helps add dynamic range to regular pictures, too. All that added data is part of the reason you can push past 3x all the way up to 5x and still get a better picture than most. I mean, just take a look at the P20 Pro zoom shots next to the iPhone X to see what I mean. These are the best zoom shots I've seen from a phone. Well, at least one that doesn't have a um, protuberance. I'm going to circle back at the end for the bad stuff on this camera, but I can't move on without talking about the other Halo feature, Night Mode. This is where Huawei pulls off some real magic. It's a crazy mix of long exposure and HDR that combines multiple photos into one. Now, snapping a night mode shot takes a while, between 4 and 20 seconds, which on most cameras would guarantee blur from hand motion, particularly if you drink as much coffee as I do. But the P20 Pro has software stabilization good enough to correct for that, so you don't need to bring a tripod along. It's not perfect. You'll sometimes get a more cartoony look than you might want, especially if you use it during the day. But in the right situation, this can pull more detail and color from the shadows than anything else. Okay, let's move beyond the camera for a bit. Much of the P20 Pro is similar to the earlier Mate 10 Pro. Now I'll toss the specs up here so you can get a refresher. Since I recently reviewed the Mate 10 Pro, I won't retread my complaints about Huawei's software. In brief, I still think it's ugly and cumbersome, and I decided to just run Nova Launcher this time with the Pixel Icon Pack. 
That doesn't help with the lock screen difficulties or the memory management idiosyncrasies, but it does make them livable. And so does the fact that the phone is fast. Moving into hardware, um, do you want to talk about it? Okay, let's talk about it. The display is bright and beautiful, but everyone's saying it and everyone is right. The purpose of a notch in a display is to maximize the real estate of that display. And if you're just going to build a chin into the phone below that screen anyway, well, you've kind of missed the point. I understand wanting to leave room for the fingerprint sensor, and I'm glad it's not on the back, which would have ruined the look. But I wish Huawei had built that sensor into the display instead. I mean, it did it on the Porsche edition of this phone. You can solve this aesthetic challenge by hiding the notch in settings, but at the expense of spawning new, strange problems in apps like Instagram. I guess we're already in the details phase, so a few more things you should know before dropping a couple car payments on this thing. It's as smudge prone as an ice cream shop window, and so slippery you can literally watch it wander off a tabletop. Mine has taken a few falls, and I've been spared from too many scratches so far, with the exception of this little bit of weathering. It does come with a case in the box and also a charger that's apparently super fast, but it won't fit in US outlets. Well, okay, but how about wireless charging? Nope. Well, fortunately, you won't need to charge often. The battery in this thing is a monster, and even after a month of use, I routinely go to bed with over 50% left in the pack. That was also the case during my time in South Korea when I was using the phone in dual SIM mode. With my T-Mobile account in one slot and a local provider in the other, I lost maybe 6 to 8% more battery over a day, which still left plenty to spare. And I know you like hearing about voice calls. Volte works, but Wi-Fi calling does not, though I had no issues with reception anywhere I went, so kind of a move point for me. For all the things I really enjoy about the P20 Pro, I'm still going to be packing a Pixel 2 for most of my camera needs, and there's one reason for that. Video. See, the P20 Pro has good stabilization in HD mode, but toggle up to 4K and you can see every tremble. That's frustrating, because the phone has all the parts for optical stabilization on all three cameras. Check out the iFixit teardown but for some reason it's only enabled on the telephoto. And there are a bunch of camera features that are just bad, like the iPhone aping portrait mode that feels like an afterthought, and the wonky super slow-mo, showcased here by BTECT. Also, the jury's still out for me about the selfie camera, which seems to leave a bit of beauty mode blurring even when I turn it off. Now, I would say that updates could fix these problems, and I hope they do but Huawei's track record on updates is inconsistent. So for now, the Pixel 2 stays as my primary camera companion. Back at CES, Executive Director Richard Yu said the sidelining of his company's smartphones in the States was a loss for American consumers. I didn't really agree at the time. I mean, the Mate 10 Pro was cool, but it just wasn't that special. Well. If you care about getting creative with your photos or pushing the boundaries of mobile photography, the P20 Pro is that special. And frankly, not having it on shelves in the US is a shame. If you do want one, it can be imported on eBay and Amazon for between $800 and $1,400, depending on whether you want this twilight paint job, which you do. And I know, I know, I know, I've missed so much about this phone. Well, stick around through a word from my sponsor. It's less than a minute, I promise. And I'll tell you where you can learn even more. Folks, becoming a software developer is something I know next to nothing about. But I do know that it's less about learning a specific set of tools than learning a new way of thinking. Well, App Academy is the best way to get there. It's a coding school, the number one coding school, according to independent reviewers. And it's no wonder. At least 120 students went from being unemployed or at minimum wage to earning an average of $100,000 a year for their first post boot camp job. After two to three years, most App Academy grads make at least $130,000. That's nuts. And so is this. You can choose a plan to put off paying tuition until after you've gotten that high paying job. This is the kind of thing that can change your life and almost anyone can do it. 
be one of them. Hit the link in the description for a chance to go to bootcamp, coding bootcamp, for free. And thanks to App Academy for sponsoring this video. One of the great things about delaying a review for a few weeks is you get to mooch off everyone else's hard work. So I want to shout them out here. Miriam Jouar has two great episodes of the Mobile Tech Podcast going super deep on the P20 Pro's camera. Android Authority has some amazing side-by-side -side comparisons with the old Lumia 1020. And if you just want an avalanche of everything on the P20 Pro, the P20 Not Pro, and the crazy Porsche design variant, hit up Android Central's marathon review. All those links are in the description. And of course, I'll answer all the questions I can in the comments. Until next time, folks, please subscribe so I can keep these videos coming. Thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.